attract a new generation of shoppers. So we're going to be talking about the differences, obviously, between millennials, baby boomers, generation X, generation Z. Um, and we're going to try and show you how you, can, as retailers, can obviously tap into a new generation. I'm joined by some amazing people. We've got Michael here, who runs Men's Finest, which is an online retail store. Um, we've got Ting from The Ting Thing. Is a blogger and she also runs a small blogging network in Birmingham, correct? And also Fran as well, who's a stylist. And we had an important conversation before this about this. We're trying to take it on to the stage as well. So let's start by talking about you know, is it essential for retailers to attract a new generation of shoppers? So start with you too. Um, I would say yes, because when I study business studies, there was always this sort of lesson about where's your next customer going to come from, and we're always taught that we need to look to the next generation whilst retaining the current generation. That's like the key, grow your brand, and to always be looking for that audience. Millennials make up a large well, significant portion of the population, and it's a very fast-growing portion of the population, and will continue to be. But not only that, they're also the people who are the most communicative in the most immediate sense, right here, right now, on social media. So if you are a brand that exists to retail to mass market, you need to find the audience that is going to talk to the mass market about your brand. Millennials are that audience. Mm. How about you, Michael? Mm. Being a retailer as well. Yeah, I mean, your question is the answer to your question is super simple. What is the alternative? Like, there isn't the, the retail versus the internet versus, like, it's, it's all there. If you're, not, if you're not online, if I, I'm a brand and I want uh, to be accessible to more people, I pay someone to actually talk about me. Like I was talking to someone today about this and uh, we were chatting with my team around their stand, we were taking some photographs and they said, well, maybe you don't take photographs. And I'm thinking, but I, don't you want to be online? Like this is the point that if I tag you, if I put you on my Instagram, if I talk uh, to my audience about you, you're going to have bigger influence, you're going to have bigger reach. I, I don't think there's a debate about whether we should do it or not. I, I also think um, a lot of people will think, mm. oh, um, I'm at the millennial generation, they're, they're so young, they're so techy, they're all on their phones. And, and even I think that of, of like teenagers sitting in cafes not talking to each other. Millennials now, they've got children. They're, they're grown-ups. They're not kids that you see kind of walking around shopping malls. Yep. They're sitting at home. They've got more spare time. They've got, um, they're, they're, you know, they're wealthy. They've got income. They've, they've, they've got the time. They, they, they want to be communicating online and reaching out to brands and retailers online as well as in stores. So it's how, how you kind of meet those two, the online presence and the physical bricks and mortar presence, I suppose. Yeah, I agree massively. I think, like you say, there's no other alternative. There's been so many brands that have played it safe. Toys R Us, of course, completely not fashion related, but played it safe. But at the top of the game, Blockbuster as well. You know, Blockbuster had a chance of buying Netflix, but didn't. And now, of course, you know, we saw it all play out. Um, uh, we know that millennials, the younger generations, spend a lot more time online, but is there still a place for bricks and mortar? You know, do millennials still shop in store? I don't know. I think you get there's this sudden reaction that millennials aren't, they're not loyal. They're not going to be loyal because they're shopping for the next offer, um, they're online continuously. I think that's a bit naive. I think if you've got an um, independent that's in your local town or your local village or even on the high street, um, a millennial is looking for excellent service. They want something different. So if you're going to exist and continue to grow your business and to bring in new um, shoppers, if you like, um, you need to be reaching out and offering something different to the, you know, the high street that, that you know, if you go to Marks and Spencer's, what you, the service that you get there. If you're an independent, you need to be looking at events um, that reach out to wider audiences. Uh, and that also in terms of what you're actually offering. There are lots and lots of brands here. I mean, I've been working in this industry for nearly 20 years and I've seen brands come and go. Um, but there are also some brands here that have just developed and grown and actually 
retained their baby boomer customer, if you like, but also develop their brand so that they also appeal to a younger customer, people like Latte, um, who have got really clear, directional, trend-driven fashion, but also something that still appeals to so you as a buyer, as a, of an independent, you can still go in and buy for both categories and appeal to a wider market, including that millennial generation. Yeah, I think you were saying about the event that you did with Oasis, I think it was, when you had bloggers come down. Um, so how do you think a bricks and mortar store can you know, get to millennials? I think that they have to complement each other and there shouldn't be a divide between the online and the offline portions of the business. When you're talking about a millennial, me, <laughs> I want something now. I am the generation of instant gratification. And if that means that I can shop online and get it delivered the next day or the same day, yes. <laughs> if it means that I can check exactly what live stock is available in my local branch, how far away it is, and when I can go and pick it up, can I reserve it? I'll go do that. Could I get it delivered in store for free? Because, you know, anything for free is better. Um, Am I going to be encouraged to buy? Absolutely. The thing that um, I think people have um, uh, in their minds is that it's all about online, it's all about online, it's all about online. And they look at a dying high street where stores are closing and saying, it has to be online. Well, no, it's about both. It's about being smart about what you're offering online and offline as a cohesive yeah. brand. And that is what's going to keep people coming in through the store, whatever generation they are, but millennials especially, when they want that instant gratification, will look and go, oh, for example, on the Oasis website, I've got a store less than a mile away, and they've got four in my size in stock now. Right, brilliant. And there's a phone number, there's a map. I know if I really want that dress for tonight, I can go and get it. If I see that I can order it, like on next, and get it delivered by 9 p.m., and I'm going on holiday the next day, brilliant. What am I going to do? Lunch hour on my smartphone, get onto the next website, get my uh, you know, swimwear and everything delivered to my home for 9 o'clock that evening. Perfect. And I know that the combination, the relationship between the two is key to keeping people coming back to the brand because convenience is still going to win yeah. when it comes to retail shopping. But, sorry to interrupt you, but as an independent retailer who can't offer that 9pm delivery or the way that you compete is that you're, you're the face up the road. I, I'm a mum. I need a bikini for tomorrow. I could order it from next one of the high street retailers, but actually, if I've got an amazing independent down the road, I'm just going to phone Claire and say, yeah, Claire, her name is oh Claire. my God, yeah, I know her by name. She knows my kids. She knows what school I go to because she's really deeply involved in my life, and I pop in and I have a coffee. And you're turning independence into a lifestyle, which is a separate thing to kind of what you get on the high street. So I think yeah. independence we really need to tap into that. Yeah, personally as well, I think that's why there's no disconnection between online and offline, in my opinion. So a lot of people that you know have an offline store go against social media because they think that they have to rival Boohoo, who has you know three million followers. Whereas, as you say. You know, Instagram, you can do location targeting on Instagram. You can search for your store and see the top posts near your store in the last 24 hours. Same with Facebook, you know, you can target location. Here today, I have not seen one advert on my Instagram feed in the last hour from any of the brands here telling me to come to their stand. Yeah, like, this is, I think we're getting confused. I haven't seen one stand here so far with all young people with the phone hired by the stand, bloggers or whoever, talking, um, creating a buzz. It's, it's crazy. I mean, this is the event. You know, people pay a lot of money to be here, yet they, they just have two blokes sitting there on their phones or, or just, I don't know, looking at whatever else minding this stand because that's what they do. It's just a missed opportunity. It absolutely yeah. is. And I think that um, taps into the other side of the millennial shopping psyche, which is about personalization. Um, and that's where independents can really thrive, is the fact that they can get to know their customers. They can talk to them one-to-one -one and targeted marketing, whether it's through your email list or whether it's through um, your Instagram or whether it's even just opening up a personal message conversation on a social media channel to talk about a customer, uh, to talk to a customer, say, oh, 
do you remember you came in and we chatted about the fact you were going on holiday by yeah. the way just to let you know we've had some new mm. items in and um, I'm going to post them up on Instagram over the next couple of days but yeah. if you want I can send you a couple of pics now and that personalization that direct contact with that customer is what's going to be the conversion between them sitting at home browsing clubbing whatever it's mm. called on their phones yeah versus actually making a journey into a store or actually trying to buy something online and saying, post that out to me. Mm. There's a massive myth that, well, I think it's a myth, that um, millennials spend less money than sort of Generation X. Do you agree with that, Frank? <laughs> I spend loads of money. <laughs> <laughs> I go shopping like every day. Do you think that's, as you say, the instant gratification, <laughs> that you see something, you want it, you buy it, and I within... Think you, I think you've got... You never switch off now. I've always got my phone. I mean, I'm always getting told off for having my phone. If, yeah. And the child, won't, I've got two kids, and they're always looking at me, and I'm on the phone. I'm thinking, oh my goodness. I think it's that instant gratification, but it's also a huge habit. I mean, I, I'm sure loads of you. But I, I mean, at 11 o'clock at night, I'm putting things in my shopping bag. I don't even check out. I mean, I'm just, I'm just putting things in, just for yeah. fun of it. Um, and I, I think. To go out to, to the high street is actually really rewarding and really exciting because you actually get to touch things. It becomes so easy and a little bit, I'm only speaking personally, I feel like it becomes a bit mundane. A really big delivery comes, I go through all of it, the quality's not there, or it's not quite what I thought it was. I keep two items, I send 15 back. My husband drops off the parcel, thank goodness. Um, so, oh, I can't even remember what the beginning of the question was. <laughs> no, but on that point though, do you think that that's going to happen because you see, um, you know, a trend will come, it'll always come back. And for me, you saw radio, then television came, and now audio's coming back again, podcasts, audio books. A lot of people are liking magazines and books again. So we were talking about do millennials spend more money, which you said yes. But do you think that there is a case of, like you say, a good bricks and mortar store coming back, millennials wanting to go there, rather than the habit of shopping online? I, I think nothing fundamental changes. People still buying from people, whether it's millennials or Gen X or baby boomers, call them whatever, they still want to have that good customer service as you mentioned. They want to have that personal touch. Whether you're big brand or not, you have to realize that early on. Otherwise, you're just going to be another, another brand that comes and goes, as you said. People buy from people. So you have to, you have to sort of nail that down. And I think social media is just a way of getting that message out there. It's, it's nothing different. It's just like putting a poster up on, on a wall somewhere, you know, on a, on a magazine ad. It's the same. It's just social media is just an avenue to, to tell people about who you are, but you still have to attract them by good customer service, good deliveries, you know, all the good things that comes with it. Absolutely. I think that the, um, the thing is that millennial generation, in my opinion, will be expecting more from their experience. They're going to be just as discerning as your baby boomer is, if I compare myself to my mother in the way that we shop, we still have expectations of good quality and good service. And the worst bit about it is if we don't get good service, we talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and on, social on social media. On social media. And not through our friends. If, if, about if the quality media. isn't good, we talk about it. But the other thing is also, if the experience in store is fantastic, we're more likely to talk about it. We're more likely to say to someone, saying, oh, where did you get that top from? Oh, never believe it. I got it from this amazing boutique store. It's a tiny independent. You won't know it's there. It's stuck between a little sandwich shop and a nail bar, but it's amazing. You have to go. And we're more likely to actually want that social experience as well of actually meeting up with our friends and going there and taking each other's photos, trying on outfits, actually trying to share that experience online. So when it comes to millennials spending money, actually, they've got the cash to spend. Like you say, some of these millennials now, they're grown-ups with kids and families and mortgages and, you know, some of us not with mortgages, but, you know, we have grown up. We're no longer the teenager in our bedroom attached to a smartphone. We now have laptops in our handbags. We have tablets on the go. We have, you know, a smartphone on us all the time, no matter which room of the house we're in. And that means that actually the ability to spend money or be persuaded to consider spending money is actually there all the time, every single second that we have a device on us. Yeah. In terms of practical advice for a brand, um, let's say that they wanted to leave today and start reaching millennials and new generations, um, what can they start to do um, if we have like, one piece of advice? From Super you? simple. A brand, uh, I would want them, if they spent three grand coming here and put in the stand up, 
have something that people want to take a selfie in your booth. Whatever that is, figure it out. Talk to influencers, talk to other stylists. Think about something that people, stop, this is amazing. You know, and hashtag, oh, oh, hashtag is, I mean, it's so simple. Like you have to make people want to take a picture on your stand with your clothes, with, with your environment. Share that because there is a 3,000 people today, even more. 50% of them taking selfie in your booth, you won. Is that the same in store as well? You want them to do the same? Absolutely. I, I talked to a store, a, a brand new menswear store that opened in Liverpool, and we talked about, I said that you have to create a space where people, when they try things on, you have a little kind of catwalk as if, so people can see themselves in the mirror and walk in a good light in a white background, because most likely they're going to take a picture, most likely they're going to be Okay, excuse me. <laughs> Fine, I'm buying this. Just, just make that process quicker and easier for them. 100%. Right. Um, I would actually just spend half an hour doing a tiny little bit of research and actually do things like search hashtags on Instagram and see what kinds of photos people are posting up. For example, changing room selfie. Yeah. Just go and have a look and see what kind of changing room selfies people are posting. And it will give you some ideas for what triggers that behavior because that's instantly people sharing your message, your clothes, your product, your store, your layout. Design everything around trying to improve that customer experience in the store, but you need to do your research first. And that's a really great way of doing it. Look to see just in half an hour, and believe me, you'll find hundreds of millions of posts under changing room selfie or under um, you know the shopping center self uh, hashtag for your mm -hmm. local town. Look to see what kinds of things people post. What do people find irresistible to take a selfie in front of or to take a photo mm -hmm. of? And learn lessons from that, absolutely. Try and replicate it. Put it into, obviously, your branding, your style. But if you want to understand what it is that um, people want, you have to kind of go and see what it is they're doing to try and understand that behavior. Mm. How about you, Frank? Um, understand the locals. Um, millennials aren't these teenagers. So if a millennial is a mother with children, then have something for the children to play with in store. Have a children's offer. There's, I live in West London, and there's a really great boutique on the high street there. Um, they stock children's wear now. So mum walks past and with a great handbag, but also there's a lovely little dress for their daughter too. So have a diverse offer that appeals to more than just your you know, pigeonhole Generation X or whoever. Um, also incentivize, make them come back, give them an offer, and then so that they keep coming back, but also going back to the locality thing, reach out to mums groups or Facebook groups. I'm part of loads of different WhatsApp groups just from like our class. And if I see something like, oh, there's a great sale on, I will literally just take a picture and post it on the group. You don't have to think social media has to be this huge, global, overwhelming, quite scary thing that you, you I'm too small, I'm not gonna get involved in that. On a local basis, a local Facebook group, a local Instagram blogger or whoever, they can connect to you and eventually that will generate sales. Yeah, good stuff. So um, in terms of the differences, we've kind of said that you know you talk directly to your customer, but some might, might have a brand here that wants to target millennials or wants to target um, baby boomers. So the difference for me is a baby boomer is someone that I see dabbling in on our retail. I always say they're a lot slower to scroll through Instagram. <laughs> you know, so they're a lot slower. So they're easier to reach. I find that doing digital marketing to a baby boomer is someone that's easier to reach because they're not as quick as a millennial. Um, Generation X, obviously, I find Generation X are influenced by baby boomers, so they're influenced by their parents, but then also influenced by their children. So they see them growing up and then they want to dabble into social media, etc. Millennials, obviously, we saw the digital age happen. I'm very fascinated about Generation Z, which is the younger generation, which, you know, they're very individual, they like to express themselves, they're very video based. They grew up watching YouTubers play games instead of us growing up playing games. So it's a completely different um, viewpoint. So how can a brand target a specific generation? I would say uh, from, from my brand, you know, Rent Accessories, we 100% target sort of 35, 45 um, male predominantly um, with our ads and with our content. And it's, um, it's very aspirational for us. So we are 
we are showing our products in a way that we want people to feel like. So if people want to feel as if you know they are the CEO of the company, we would put a campaign on to actually show them that, and we'll use the language to sort of reflect that. So I, I can, you know, I, I'm not selling to 13 year olds, so I'm, I'm not having an even Snapchat. I don't do snaps, I don't know how Snapchat works, because it's not my demographic, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't want it. So it's, but you have to know what, what your um, segment of the market is, and of course you do if you're a brand. I think you were saying about the difference between the way your husband buys clothes and you buy clothes. Yes. So is that a divide in generations that you were saying? It is. So um, my husband is Gen X and I am a millennial um, because of a technicality in the way they've drawn the line. <laughs> But actually, if you look at the way we use our smartphones, the way we shop, and the way we even communicate with friends and family, you can see a very obvious behavioural difference. Mm. So my husband will be quite happy to pay four ninety nine for delivery and wait ten days for it, whereas I'll be like, I'm not paying four ninety nine delivery and waiting ten days. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to go to town and, and I'm going to actually um, get it now. Um, and I think that it's really key to actually go and find that audience and talk to them. I've been approached numerous times, even if it's just like a cheeky email, just to kind of go, hi, I'm a local business owner in your area. I just wondered, would it be possible for me to buy you a coffee and just chat to you for an hour, a little bit, a few ideas um, about maybe how we could work together? And I'll go along for the conversation, and I do like coffee, so obviously that will win me over. Cake, even better. But the whole point is, is the fact that I'm happy to give up an hour of my time and talk to someone, and it might be that actually it's not a fit for me, but I'll be happy to give them a few ideas, and I might take a few snaps and share them on my Instagram story or tweet about them later, because I've now started a conversation with a brand, and it's that personal connection which will make me think of them. Yeah. And my husband won't even consider that an option. He'll be like, oh, some weirdos message me off the internet. I don't know who they are. I'm not going to answer that. And he'll delete the message. And he'll be like, oh my God, it's a scam. It's a scam. <laughs> <laughs> they want money. They want money. They want something from it. Well, so he, he won't understand it. Whereas, yeah, I'm not saying that it's true. For like, you know, he's not the voice of his generation and I'm not the voice of mine by all means. Yeah. But just as an example of like two people within one household. That is the difference in the behaviour, and me getting that conversation, or even just um, you know an engagement on my conversation that I'm having, not to sell, but just to chat, makes me think, oh, okay, there's someone with personality. It's not a bot. It's not um, you know an outsourced um, you know team in India that's like doing all the, the things, which is what my husband thinks it always is. Yeah. This is actually a person with a personality representing the brand talking to me online mm. and it's that kind of personalized communication which is always going to pique my interest and get me more interested and excited about brands when I see them. Yeah, I think that's a great point as, as well with actually knowing your brand, knowing your brand's values, who your customer is because if you're trying to talk to absolutely everyone it's, it's never going to work, you almost end up talking to no one. So like you say the way I would market to your husband would be different to the way that I would market to you because of the different I mean, generations. Um, I know we're running out of time, so just quickly, in terms of a brand maybe wanting to use social media, I'm guessing there's a lot of brands here dabbled in social media, it hasn't really paid off, and they think this doesn't work, it's a complete lie that everyone's saying. Um, what tip would you give someone, we're all on social media, what tip would you give someone, a brand here, that wants to start with social media for their business? Just figure it out, and it's super easy if you just wrap your brain around it. They want you to succeed. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever platform you're using to communicate your message, they want you to do well. They will take your money, but they want you to succeed. Like their business is based on you succeeding. Yeah. Like that's it. The newspaper or the the, the post, they they can't kind of, okay, they can accept your money. They they've got no idea whether they brought you any business or not. Facebook will tell you to the penny whether you know people spend money with you or not so yeah. uh, it, it's just it's just, that's not even the babies I mean, let's go on social media for me i would say you have to consider social media as part of your overall marketing strategy and not as an add-on and sometimes that means thinking again about who your customer is who your brand needs to talk to and actually thinking which social media platform is then right for you 
because it's not a case of actually being all hands on deck on every day. It sometimes can be being a bit clever. If you think about marketing in a magazine, you wouldn't market in every magazine. You would think about which magazine has got your reader in. It's the same. Is my audience on Facebook? Is it on Instagram? Is, is it on YouTube? Where do I need to be? And consider it as part of your overall marketing strategy. And then redirect your efforts accordingly, depending on who it is you need to target. Yeah. And use the targeting tools. Yeah. Fran, you said that obviously you wasn't on any social media, but as a stylist, you set up Instagram. So what have you done on Instagram? Um, I have to be on Instagram for work. Um, I mean, if before a brand new talk to me, sometimes I want to know how many followers I've got, which I just find terrifying. I'm like, can't you just book me on my merit? I've been doing this nearly 20 years. Um, but kind of going back to what, to what you were saying previously, I get a bit concerned about um, brands and buyers saying, well, my customer is a baby bloomer and they're kind of stuck in their ways because those, I hate to say it, those baby bloomers are getting older. They're not going to be here forever. And if you want your store to be here forever, you do need to appeal to the millennial and then the younger market. So from a, just a styling perspective, something as simple as an Instagram post with a picture of my mum in a gilet with a polo neck and a lovely skirt, and then me in the same gilet but with jeans and boots, and just showing your customers how you can buy one item of clothing and actually you can appeal to your baby boomers and you can appeal to your millennials and then educating your staff so that they understand how to sell that to both markets. Um, so I always feel like don't, don't think about, if you can use Instagram in that way to appeal to your baby boomers, your generation X and, yeah. and everything in between and don't be afraid to kind of experiment in terms of styling to get that message across. Mm. Yeah, and I think as we've all said as well, is it's focusing on engagement rather than you know the amount of followers that you have. I always say we, we haven't really spoken about much about influence marketing, but micro-influencers that share on Instagram because they're passionate about it and now they have this following, they have this engagement. Um, so I think it's the same with brands. You, know, you can have a really small following. If there's a loyal, engaged following of customers, hopefully it's going to be profitable. Um, I don't know if we have time for questions. Do we have time for questions? Just some now, yeah, 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 yeah,